So I'm going to begin today uh, by introducing our first speaker and distinguished university professor, Dr. Moira Stewart from the Department of Family Medicine. In a peer's letter of support uh, submitted for her nomination, Dr. Stewart is described as the world's leading authority on patient-centered care and one of the most eminent figures in the field of family medicine. High praise for the holder of the Dr. Brian W. Gilbert Tier 1 Chair, uh, Canada Research Chair in Primary Health Care. For the past 30 years, Dr. Stewart has focused on primary care health services, including the critical importance of communication between the patient and their doctor. Among her many research achievements, Moira's work helped to create the first in Canada database in primary health care that uses the international standard of coding within an, electronical, an electronic medical record. And under her leadership, Western Centre for Studies in Medicine has grown dramatically, now encompassing 10 researchers, attracting more than $8 million in grants annually. Among her many distinctions as an educator, Moira currently leads a CIHR-funded multidisciplinary program designed to train researchers to address the critical issues related to, Can to the Canadian primary health care system. Tudor PHC, as it's called, involves six universities and more than 100 graduate students, postdoctoral fellows, residents, and clinicians from ma family medicine, nursing, epidemiology, psychology, social work, pharmacology, sociology, and education. Moira's lengthy record of service extends well beyond her department, uh, faculty, and Western's campus community. She has served as a president of the North American Primary Care Research Group. She has served of the, as the chair of research directors group of the College of Family Physicians. And she presently serves as a member of the advisory board for the National Diabetes Management Strategy of the Canadian Diabetes Association. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming distinguished university professor, Dr. Moira Stewart. Thank you very much, uh, Provost Deacon, uh, and colleagues, and friends, and ladies and gentlemen. Um, I'm deeply honored by this award. You can imagine why I've had my whole career at Western, including my PhD training. I had a little postdoc somewhere else in the middle. So to be honored uh, by, you know, by my community for my whole career is really deeply meaningful. I want to thank my chairs and deans over the years. I want to thank uh, Steve Wetmore for nominating me and for being a great chair today. Uh, Dean Michael Strong for his unwavering commitment to strengthening research in clinical departments. And I'm one of those strange people who is a basic scientist within a clinical department. And so I value his commitment to clinical uh, research. Research uh, programs of the Department of Family Medicine are located at the Center for Studies in Family Medicine. Um, and uh, that uh, center has been well supported by department chairs before Dr. Wetmore, Chair Ian McQuinney, Brian Hennan, and Tom Freeman. And I want to mention two previous deans in particular who supported and were instrumental in the development of the Center for Studies in Family Medicine. Um, Dean Robert McMurtry and Dean Carol Herbert. And finally, I want to thank, give a special thank to my ever-loving and supportive family, Tom Freeman, who's here, and our two busy daughters, Kate and Amy. Kate is in Toronto, a social work fellow, and Amy is a nurse here in London and the mother of a 21-day-old baby and our first grandchild. She tried to get here, but it wasn't, gonna, wasn't working at two, 2 o'clock. She said, no, no, this is not working. So my lecture will have five parts. And the first part, I think you'll be interested, is a little bit of Western history, recent history. And then there'll be four sections on my research program. So the history is the story of the origins of family medicine at Western. In 1968, Dr. Carol Buck, Canada's premier epidemiologist of the time, and chair of the Department of then Community Medicine, recruited Ian McQuinney from the UK 
to become Canada's first professor of family medicine, which was a division within the epidemiology department, uh, as it is called now. He became, Dr. Ian McQuinney, became the world's leader of academic family medicine and received many, many honors, uh, including being an inductee in the Canadian Medical Hall of Fame. How fitting that these two giants, Carol Buck and Ian McQuinney, um, uh, are honored today indirectly through me because they were my co-supervisors of my PhD thesis. Um, so their uh, success uh, reflects in the people that they have mentored. So I'm now going to turn to the four sections of my research program that I want to tell you about. First section is to provide you with some background and orientation of the kind of work that I do. Our field is the field of primary care, which is predominantly family physicians working with patients in the community in non-hospital settings. And primary care has recently been recognized as the foundation, the complete foundation of the, uh, of the healthcare system of Canada. Yet it remains relatively under-researched, except by active centers such as the Center for Studies in Family Medicine. Within the center, I'm a scientist. I have a PhD in epidemiology, and I'm grateful for the Department of Epidemiology and Biostatistics here at Western, where I'm cross-appointed, where I have many supportive colleagues. So I'm this non-clinician in a clinical department, reflecting a key theme of today's lecture, which is scientists doing exemplary science and working within um, settings where their work can be applied and implemented. So the studies that I conduct are quantitative studies where we measure or quantify or score some aspect of clinical practice. And my particular passion, expressed very early on in my PhD program, was to illuminate the intersection between physical problems, medical problems, psychological problems, and social problems, all of these issues that make people suffer. So I'm going to turn now from my orientation to my second aspect of my presentation, which, uh, in which I'm going to describe for you the concepts that we developed um, as a research team of three family physicians and three interdisciplinary researchers. We described a conceptual framework to help explain what are family doctors and other healthcare professionals doing when a visit with a patient goes really well. So for you, you may think of yourself as a patient here and think of how these concepts might apply to you as a patient. So there are four components in this approach, which we later uh, call the patient-centered clinical method, which integrate to some extent the art and the science of medicine and hence the title of my presentation today. The first component of such care is to explore with the patient both the disease, the signs and symptoms and lab results and the patient's illness experience, their feelings, their ideas about what might be wrong, how it affects their daily function, and what are their expectations of the healthcare system and the family doctor. The second component is that person, uh, that patient, um, as a whole in context. So the patient's personality, their stage of life, as well as their family and community and environment context. The third component, building on the first two, is actually the one that we found to be most important. And that's a mutual discussion between the patient and the family doctor of all of those patients' problems that I've just described, as well as their goals for treatment and management and the roles that they each perceive they can fulfill. The patient considers, are they, do they feel confident in fulfilling a certain role they might be asked to play? And the clinician makes explicit what he or she is committing to. The fourth component of the patient-centered clinical method is enhancing the ongoing patient-clinician relationship. And in family practice, that relationship could be years, decades, generations long. And it consists of shared experiences, compassion, empathy, a sharing of power, and trust. So the conceptual development of these four components basically took elements of the encounter between doctors and patients, uh, which were previously considered to be very difficult to describe, maybe even impossible to describe, and it made them explicit and therefore researchable, which brings me to my third section of this lecture, 
the research program based on these concepts of patient-centered care. So our job as quantitative researchers was to create ways to examine these four components, and we've done so by creating two measures. One is an observation measure where we listen to audio tapes or view videotapes of patients and family doctors with their permission, and we categorize and we score and we, uh, we, we, we can then compare. And the second measure is a patient perception measure where the patient fills out a questionnaire at the end of their visit and they comment on these dimensions uh, that they've just experienced. And here are some examples of what we've discovered using those kinds of measures and others using our measures and other measures. First of all, Patients have a great complexity of these problems. It's, an, it's not true that patients come to their, their physician with one problem, one disease at a time. They come with this whole complex of problems. Second, patients expect patient-centered care. You ask them, do they want x-rays, do they want uh, tests, do they want a diagnosis, and maybe 25% will say yes, but more than 75% say they want all of those dimensions of patient-centeredness that I just described. Patient's third finding, patient-centered care, or interventions, we call them, to uh, improve patient-centered care have been found consistently to affect positive patient health outcomes. They actually, patients actually improve with this kind of care. Their recovery is enhanced, symptom resolution is enhanced, blood pressure is lowered, blood sugars are better. And the final point that we found and very recently published on is that patient-centered care is associated with lower health system costs. In fact, a third of the costs. Patient-centered care results in fewer subsequent visits, fewer diagnostic tests ordered, fewer referrals, and that all adds up to a third of the cost um, when compared to non-patient-centered care as we've defined it. So now I begin the fourth and final section of, uh, of this lecture. What do we scientists or researchers do with these kinds of findings? Well, we're applied health services researchers, so we're committed to translating those kinds of findings into both practice and better policy. We do this in many ways that take a lot of commitment and a lot of energy, it takes us away from writing new grants. Um, first of all, we work with clinicians throughout the research program that I've already, and I've already described how uh, I have done that. Um, second, we now here at Western have large grants that connect us with policymakers at the Ministry of Health and Long-Term Care of Ontario, permitting research uh, on issues of immediate importance to the policymakers. So when they call us and ask for a quick expertise, a quick telephone call, giving our expertise, research results that we've uh, research we've already done or some, some new question they want us to ask and answer, and it might take us uh, ye several years to answer, we know that those results, because they've asked us for them, they, we know that those results are going to become part of the policy process. So in conclusion, working with clinicians and policymakers is so gratifying for those of us researchers who consider ourselves to be applied health researchers, who like me, like to make bridges between town and gown, and we want our research to change the world. Thanks for listening to me. So I, so I have the pleasure of, uh, of giving you one of these lovely uh, framed documents, and then you can uh, bring your arm.